Hey guys, welcome to the fourth episode. It's a little late. I apologize. You you can't see me right now because I've got a bandana on my head and dirt and I'm a mess. But hello, hi, how are you guys? Here are my gorgeous hellebores. I wanted to start out the episode with a bang because they are so beautiful. Okay, so one thing that I did want to show you in this video because I think it is super helpful is making a quote unquote uh, invisible trellis. So I have my main trellis here and I wanna train these canes off to cover the side of our family room to go up above and to just cover this whole wall. You wanna get some heavy gauge fishing line, like so. Pair of scissors. These are called trellis anchors. I picked these up on Amazon and they're just like these little metal, little metal caps with a area where you can loop through. I'm gonna show you on the house in a moment. Ta-da! So there's a glob of silicone there. I used, oh my gosh, look how dirty my hands are. That is tacky. <laughs> but hey, I'm gardening, what can I say? So I used Gorilla Waterproof Clear Caulk. We will see how this holds up through the heat. I let this dry for 24 hours, even though it said 30 minutes, because I'm using some pretty thick rose canes here, and I didn't want it to pull, you know, right or, or pop right off. So far, so good. I did not make this super taut. There's give here, and you can see where it ties off there to the other side. I did that at the top as well. You can see the two little, two little metal bits right there. Once those grow in, you won't see that silver. I have my fingers crossed that the silicone will stay put even with the heat. Um, now, even with something like this, you know, the, my, the whole idea here was that I didn't want to damage the house, even though I'm not sh shy about putting screws or putting things up, um, you know, when I need to, to get that look going that I want. If you can minimize the damage, why not? You might as well do something that's not gonna completely harm your house. This is vinyl siding that looks like the Cedar Shake. So it is vinyl siding. And I imagine if you wanted to pull those off, you could just use mineral spirits or rubbing alcohol to get off the residue. Do a test spot first. <laughs> Don't put all this silicone over your house and say, well, Laura at How's It Growing told me to. No, don't do that. I'm telling you don't do that. <laughs> do a little test spot first just to make sure that it's something that you're comfortable with. And uh, yeah, you do it with caution. All things with caution. <laughs> so while we are on the topic of trellises, I've got this pink mink clematis here. And I cut this one way back every single year. Definitely look up, Google what variety you have because different clematis, you know, react differently to pruning and you don't want to mess it up. But I cut this one back really heavy um, in the fall because I put garlands and things for, for Christmas and for the holidays. But anyway, here's another method that I use. So an alternate to the fishing line, you can use paddle wire. I've got this kind of T cross coming through the uh, lamppost and I just string it down. I have a landscape staple down here, right there, that I tie it off to. So really, you can see how bushy this is. I usually tie this up sooner than this, um, but now I get to show you, so there you go. Um, it really serves as a guide just to keep it from flopping and doing all of that, but once it gets growing up the fishing line, the wire, whatever it is that you have, those are gonna mesh together. This is just one clematis, by the way, that it's been here at least 10 years, maybe longer. Um, comes back big and beautiful every single year. It's one of my favorites, but it'll mesh and grow together and wrap around the poles. So this is really just kind of to get it started on its way. Okay, so I have it all set here. It's super easy. Now you might be wondering, will this cut through your vines? Um, I've not had a problem with it. But if you've got really tender baby new plants um, you, that, you know, that you're trying to train, maybe try some bamboo stakes or how you see that sometimes they come shipped with a little bamboo trellis. Maybe do that to get it established and a little bit thicker. Cause you can see as these age, look how thick these stems are. I mean, this is a, this is a pretty, pretty strong, sturdy plant here. And I just have it up both sides 
And from here, it'll just take care of itself. Maybe every now and again, I'll come along because I like to play with stuff and, and guide it back where it belongs, but it will cover this whole entire um, lamppost in no time. It just, it's amazing. I love it. So while we're out here, let me show you my spring flowers. I'm so happy. I planted lots and lots of muscari, which you guys know really does uh, multiply easily. You just look at it and up pops another plant and it will probably wander into the lawn and, and so forth. But I don't mind. I really love the way it looks. I even have some pink and yellow tulips that popped up from previous years. And the daffodils, you know, they come back reliably and multiply and naturalize every year. So those are always a big, a big win for me. And they're deer resistant as well. If you guys have deer pressure, I don't, okay. I'm not, I'm not bragging, but I don't have deer. I'm sorry. Uh, no deer here. And then I did just plant some phlox the other day. I need to come in with some mulch and things, but I think I'm going to wait until I get some more of my summer annuals in here. So I'm not, you know, kind of pushing things aside and making a mess and then having to clean it up again. So you can see my drip and you know, all that, but I planted some beautiful flocks here that I picked up at the supermarket because <laughs> I couldn't resist and it's a perennial. So it will, again, it'll spread and grow in and fill in next year. So I'm just really happy with it. I think it looks great. I'm so, so happy and that spring is here and we're finally got a bit, blah, blah, excuse me, we're finally able to get back into our gardens again. I know you guys must be super happy too. So let me just walk you guys up here and show you another change that I made in fixing my garden. So you guys know my steps. I'm not gonna get into it because I've already talked about it, but Mark and I are looking on replacing and repairing our steps. There's some issues with the risers being different heights. I'd like to have two railings that are wooden railings with spindles to more match the style of the house. That's for another day because we've got way, way, way too much that we're doing and these are fine for now. They've been here for a hundred years, I imagine, and they can, uh, they can be here for a little bit longer. So one thing that I did here is, you guys might remember, I had this giant container right there, the one by the door, on my front step right there for a really long time. And like you guys know, I'm a fan of symmetry. You can see I've got my two pots there. Love things balanced. Um, this isn't balanced, obviously, <laughs> but having a great big pot on the top step always felt awkward and out of place to me. It felt like it was kind of like blocking the view of the door. Like, you know, you grow as a gardener, you grow as a person and your tastes kind of change. I haven't done much in the way of like thriller, spiller, filler method in a while, unless it's a big urn, you know, there's exceptions to every rule, but generally speaking, I like just like simple pots. You guys know I collect and I love. This is the Wakefield Handmade, my friend Peter. This isn't sponsored, he's my friend, I love him. I've been shopping from him uh, way before Instagram or anything like that. But if you guys are interested, I highly encourage you to check him out uh, at wakefieldhandmade.com and he gave me a coupon to share with you guys. If you use the code How's It Growing, you'll save 10% and I'm pretty sure he offers free shipping on most if not everything. I love and adore Peter. I love handcrafted and handmade pottery. It is just one of my favorite things to enjoy. I just feel like the flowers plus the pot just offers such a beautiful, just a beautiful picture to, that you're painting. I love it. And um, I love this little group here. I think, oh, there's a little, <laughs> that it always looks like he's flying in slow motion look at that that's so funny uh, so he enjoys it too but anyway let me show you what I did here since you know I like balance so it was actually this one I apologize this one was the one on my uh, top step and it's so large I usually have some kind of a little display right here which is fine and nice but I really wanted to offer that same balance here so this one I had um, just sitting in a pot and it was really, really badly winter bronze. So I gave it some of the Espoma plant tone. You wanna use plant tone again on your boxwoods and your arborbites, not the holly tone because these are not acid loving. So keep that in mind when you're fertilizing this spring to use the plant tone for boxwoods and for arborbites. Anyway, I put that one here, I clipped it back. Um, 
which I'm not going to do to my ones in the landscape if you just saw that they were a little shabby when we, we were out front there because it is like in the 80s this week, which is nuts. And I don't want to burn up, you know, my boxwoods right now. So I'm going to wait for the temperatures to cool a little bit, wait for some overcast days. Then I'll go along and trim up my boxwoods so I'm not exposing them to too scorching sun right now. It's April and 80, okay. <laughs> But I'm loving it. This one's a little on the yellowish side, but the plant tone should help with that. And then I just underplanted with those same blue pansies and some little uh, creeping fig, which I'm I'm having like a creeping fig moment right now. <laughs> I like it. I bought a few plants and I just think that they look so pretty. And then swinging around, I set up a little tiny, just a little display here. Nothing major with a couple of little terracotta pots. The light here is terrible. I'm sorry and a little boxwood topiary there. There's not much else to show you guys in the way of changes, but my new veggie beds are in transit, on their way. I'm super duper excited. So yeah. Oh yeah, I do have some news. One of my espaliers died. I think I showed you in a previous video that it was looking quite unhealthy. Well, I got confirmation that it was no longer with us. Don't ask me how, don't ask me why. I don't have an answer. I've done everything I can to properly care for these trees. And as you can see, these are looking gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. As with this one here is looking beautiful. So I initially started out with four and now I'm down to two. And I have to say, I'm kind of bummed out about it. I really am, but I'll plant something else. I'll plant something else. I'll, I'll see if I can find maybe an espalier pear or maybe give a hand at, um, give a go at making an espalier myself. I don't know. We'll do something. The trellising is here so I could grow clematis on it. I could grow anything I want on it. And eventually these branches will grow together and those will just keep going off in that direction. So you know, it takes time, but it'll fill in. Just a bummer. I wanted to update you guys because you guys do ask about the espalier a lot, and I sure do love them. You can see the beautiful color of the crab apple here, and it's going to have blooms in no time. It's got buds all over it. So by the next video, I should be able to show you beautiful flowers on this. <laughs> so this is a pot of muscari. You guys, my shadow, I apologize. It is the most beautiful color. I forgot to plant these and I put these in a pot in, I don't know, March, a, a few weeks ago because <laughs> I didn't want to waste them and they're growing and that's amazing. I did not expect that. So there they are. Rhubarb looking happy. Uh, blueberry and raspberry here so that'll go somewhere within the new layout. And the garlic is just looking fantastic. Oh my gosh, this happened overnight. Look at this, oh my gosh. I was out here the other day. I'm gonna have to break these off, oh my God. I was out here the other day and this, this asparagus was like teeny, teeny, tiny, and now it's huge. That's hilarious. Oh my gosh, wow. The asparagus in particular just amazes me. I don't know why. I guess I just don't expect it and there it is. The garlic I will not harvest until probably July, but I'll let you guys know when. And I'm gonna do my very best to very, very carefully move it because I don't wanna disrupt it. So I'm gonna keep as much soil as I can around those bulbs when I transfer it to the new raised beds. So another thing I did, and it's not glamorous at all, is there's this little kind of alleyway, and that's all gonna go away and, and look nicer. <laughs> but behind that rickety lattice there um, is like this decent sized area that is just a mess. Like, it, well, it was a mess, covered in weeds, uh, thistle weed. It, it's just, it was like no man's land. It's the place where we used to store our bricks you know, debris, anything that we didn't want to see but couldn't figure out where to put for the time being went over there. So since we're reconfiguring here, we're going to take these two narrow beds and put them one in front of the other and give them to my kids to play in. They would love it. They're calling it their secret garden. And you can go around the back. I'll show you. I'll show you. It's not, it's not pretty. It's, there's nothing there, but I'll show you. And they're going to be one bed for Leo, one bed for Luke, and they are super excited about it. We're actually going to go out later today and get their first plant. They, they are like so into it so i'm in, i'm into it too because 
this is the most useless space ever on the side of the garage. And now I feel like the kids will have their secret garden. And I think that that's terrific. I can't believe I'm bringing you guys back here, but I'm going to. <laughs> See here. Okay. So here's the thistle weed, which is just absolutely horrible. And I can use that weed tool, that one you step on and pull up. I used that one in a wine and weeds video with Aaron at the Impatient Gardener. I'll link that here so you can refer back to it. But it's great for these tap roots. I hate landscape fabric, you guys. See, no man's land. I gotta figure out where these things are going. Um, I hate landscape fabric, I have to tell you. I don't like it, but we used it here because we really felt we wanted a clean slate. I'm gonna see. <laughs> Excuse me. This would be a fabulous area for the boys. Look, I'm turning, I'm turning the corner cautiously in case there is something back here. Okay, there's nothing. But you see, there's all this beautiful, nice space here where they can have their secret garden. I'll put those two narrow beds more against the fence, one here and one there. Leo can have his, Luke can have his, and they'll just have a ball. I love it. I absolutely love it. I think it's great. I want to show you guys what else is blooming right now, even though it's not a fix it topic per se. <laughs> Look at these snakehead fritillaria. Aren't they beautiful? These petite little blooms. I love them. And they have this like checkerboard pattern. Look at that. Isn't that so cool? So I have a bunch of them here and these will naturalize and spread. I have also, um, what is it? Snowdrops. So those already bloomed and did their thing. The obelisk here, I moved here. The birdhouse was here. I think I talked to you guys about that. I love it here. It looks so good from the window. I just have to figure out what I'm gonna plant on it. Uh, you know, do I wanna do annual vines? Do I wanna do a clematis? I got one here. This one is called Sparky Pink. So I have options. And then you can see this plant here with the kind of ferny foliage. This is Love in a Mist, Nigella, that I planted direct sowed. I just sprinkled a whole darn pack down uh, last year and it just self sowed all over. So that's great. We love it when that happens. I've got some daffodils. Shoot, I can't remember the name, but look at those. Aren't they pretty? I'm going to put the name up here so you can see. And these I planted maybe three years ago and they are just multiplying and happy as can be. My blood good Japanese maple, all that pretty new spring growth. I've got really big plants here, you guys. Um, I'm trying not to talk about everything because I don't wanna overwhelm myself, but uh, as I do it, I will let you know <laughs> as the time comes. So the next real true thing I'm focusing on is raised beds and refacing that garage. I'm It's go time on that. I want this to look pretty and I can picture it, um, but I have plans for stepping stones here leading to the greenhouse, planting up with even more, making a curved path here. Oh, so many things, so many things. So if you have a lot of projects that you're working on, you are not alone, you guys. <laughs> Speaking of projects, here's all my seedlings. Oh my word. So yeah, most of these I grew from seeds. Some of these are from uh, Burpee. Burpee sent me some plants, which I'm super excited about. Um, some little stars to try, some hollyhocks. And this is a uh, an allium, pink moon, this one here. But most of these I grew and it's so hot. I took them out of the greenhouse because it these are gonna fizzle up and I really do need to uh, start moving these into larger pots. There's some lobelia here, which is way over seeded, too many. I need to thin them. Some verbascum, uh, zinnias, geraniums, more geranium. Oh no, what is that? Oh, that is um, Lavatera, pink regis. I love that one. These are straw flowers. Some silver sage. Aaron at the Impatient Gardener inspired me with this one too. Look how fuzzy. So sweet, so cute. These are some hollyhocks I just kind of broadcast spread um, in a tray. I love to do that sometimes. You know, if you're gonna grow a lot of things, that's what I did here with the sunflowers. These are pro cut plum sunflowers. If you know you're gonna grow a bunch of things, broadcast them in a tray. There's no drainage, but see how this is a little bit dry to the touch? I'm gonna come along and give that a little drink today. I love to start things like sunflowers 
in trays like this indoors rather than direct sew because of all the squirrel pressure that I have here it's better for them to get established and started and then once they do get to this point I'll plant them I'm like behind, I'm really behind because I have so many things I want to do normally I would plant them at this size because they're good um, I can cover them with a cloche still to protect them further but then I also have just to show you guys and I've showed you this before this is called cat scat mat and this does not harm our furry friends it's it's just little hard pieces of plastic that stick up it does not it's it's humane trust me and you can cut this and you just wring it out around your seedlings and it just makes a nice barrier this it will startle the squirrels away and they won't bother your stuff so i do a lot of things like that to keep them away and then I also use this product too. Um, it's a granular application. Here's all the things that supposedly don't like it. <laughs> um, I think it works really well. And after it rains, yeah, you do wanna come back out and reapply. So between this and the cloches and the scat mat, I mean, there's only so much you can do. <laughs> there's only so much you can do. It is a garden, it is outside, and animals are of course gonna be interested in what you have to offer them. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I'm so excited. <laughs> the hole reducers totally, totally are working, you guys. Okay, look. Like right now, they're trying to get in. I'm, I'm whispering because, <laughs> uh-oh. Oh my God, how rude. Oh, we're watching like, Get a room, what the heck? <laughs> well, that was not staged nor planned, but there we go. <laughs> anyway, oh my God, that's so funny. Okay, so they're working. Um, I cleaned out the birdhouse. I installed those hole reducers. They're also known as predator guards. From what I understand, they can keep out snakes and things as well. So if you have problems like that, maybe give them a shot. I'll link to where I got them down below. I ordered them on Etsy. I order lots of things on Etsy because I feel like, you know, I really want to support people that make things. I love to support people that make things and, and make a living making my life easier. Oh my gosh, look at this. See, they really want to get in here. They can't though. Look at that. Look at that. A tiny, tiny little fraction of me feels bad but 99% of me does not feel bad because again, if you Google these house sparrows, uh-uh, not good. Uh, and I know you're listening, mom, not good. My mom <laughs> does not want to be bothered by it. She loves to look at the birds. She does not care. Um, and she's, yeah, it is what it is. It all depends on the level of effort that you want to put in. And I am committed to reducing their population in my backyard. And if you are too, and you want to see more chickadees and more goldfinches and more tiny birds that these aggressors will not um, take over, then try something like the predator guards because it is 100% working. Okay, I think I showed you guys in a video. So this is what you would call a lilac in shock. <laughs> I moved this lilac um, too late, too late, I'd say. I should have done it, you know, maybe a month or so ago when it was still really cool out. I didn't expect it was gonna get into the 80s. So I've been watering this like crazy and it is per perking up, um, you know, but when this sun comes out, it really starts to droop down. When the evening temp temps come along and the sun goes in, it looks a little bit happier, but it's, yeah, it, it's gonna make it and it's gonna be fine, but it's just gonna have a little bit of a struggle that I could have avoided if I tried to transplant this sooner when it was cooler out or if I would have waited until fall. So doing transplanting anything in the heat in summer, it's not the best idea, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do and then, you know, just baby it and hold its hand a little bit while it gets reacclimated. I wanna show you guys my tulips and my pots. Look at this. <gasps> so pretty the purple inside this white one is just mwah, <laughs> chef's kiss <laughs> i love it this is a mix i got from color blends 
and it is absolutely gorgeous gorgeous so beautiful there's purples uh, yellows and whites in this mix okay that's all <laughs> I hope this uh, this gets your your wheels turning maybe gets you outside doing some projects maybe you'll build a trellis if you do tag me share what you're doing with me I'd love to hear it I hope you guys are having a wonderful early spring and getting to enjoy all the beautiful things in the garden all right I'll see you next time guys bye bye I'm back you know why I went to show you guys start laughing now are you ready okay look at this I'm making a chicken topiary you guys <laughs> so I shared a reel on Instagram um, I've had this sprinter boxwood in this pot for years and every time I looked at it I'm like you know what I'm gonna try and make that a topiary <laughs> I'm gonna try it and see and okay okay I know it doesn't look much like a chicken right now but it will you have to use your imagination and in time this will fill in just to show you um, because you know perspective wise <laughs> I want to explain what my thinking is so this is the back tail feather there's the chicken breast and <laughs> here will be the head so I'm gonna let that fill in and then I'll shape it and um, yeah hopefully we'll have something that looks like a chicken I gotta tell you I had a lot of really nice comments on Instagram of people telling me they think it already looks like a chicken. So be nice to me, <laughs> please. Um, because, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder and this chicken has feelings too. Okay, I'll see you guys next time.